I feel bamboozled by negative water, I feel clowned, I don't know how she managed to do that because I was confident that I know where she's going. Hey once a call and welcome back to my channel. This is going to be the Call Down the Hawk reading blog. I started the book yesterday in the evening and I'm around four or five chapters in and even the first one made me remember how much I love the Orient Cycle and how much I vibe with uh, Maggie Stewart's writing. I could read a book, a spin-off, from the point of view of any of the characters that uh, were uh, first introduced in the Raven Cycle because they are all so vibrant and interesting and have backstories, I'm pretty sure. But I'm really happy that she had chosen a Lynch's because I believe they have the most to offer. Also the first few descriptions of Lynch's as a family and uh, their relationship makes me think that this is going to be such a fascinating story. I'm so excited, so excited. I'm going to be home at least for four days because I quit my job. I've talked a little bit about it on Twitter. Basically what happened is that I burned out about six months ago and two of my bosses quit. And then uh, new managers were assigned and I don't like them. I told them that I want to quit and then they started uh, asking me what they should do so I would um, stay because I'm the only person who knows this software and I told them that I want a raise, I want a new position, I want more money. Uh, they told me that this uh, the sum that I mentioned is a bit too much and I told them that they can find a job for this exact sum very easily, which is true. And um, they freaked out a little bit, mm, they thought I'm not going to find anything and then I found a job, um, I got an offer and I told them that I'm quitting. So they were freaking out, telling me that they're going to reconsider my uh, request in six months if I'll stay. And I'm not ready to stay there for six months. I also consider it to be a sign of disrespect that they are arguing with me about money when they know that they are paying me less than the market requires. So that was one of the reasons, I guess. And also after that meeting, a person who knows about all the salaries in our department told me that a guy that I was training for eight months and who's basically useless, who I was covering for for this entire eight month is making that sound that I was asking for. So I was a bit flabbergasted by this news because they also know that this guy doesn't do even a half of the work that I do. They told me this upfront, that's why they were afraid that I'm going to quit. And they're still paying him this sum that I asked for. So I don't know why they thought I'm going to stay. They were pulling all the shenanigans that they could. So many people walked up to me and told me that I shouldn't quit. People that I didn't expect to play into this game at all. Maybe pay your employees a decent wage if you are afraid that you're going to lose them. Anyway, the lesson here is never settle and if you feel like you've outgrown the position that you're in at the moment, look for other options. Anyway, I did decline the first offer that I landed because it's not really the industry that I want to work in. And I went on a lot of interviews. It was actually very fascinating this time because I know what I want. And I've been talking with one employer and um, he told me that they are preparing an offer for me. So I'm waiting for that and they want me to start on Monday. Also hopefully work from home, which is a new thing for me, but I'm really excited about that. So this is a little update on my career uh, for people who were wondering and on my general mood. I'm very, very happy.
I'm making myself a cup of tea and I have the time to talk about the bug. The way Baby Stewart writes her books is very peculiar. She does foreshadowing very straightforwardly and you won't know about that if you have not read the first books in the Raven Cycle because the last book, well, all, almost all the things in the last book were foreshadowed in a very straightforward way. We didn't know uh, that one of them was a ghost but Maggie Stewart literally said that at the start of the first book. She said it so many times and we didn't believe her. And that's what I like slash enjoy about her writing. It's very interesting and it would only work with her type of writing because she uses a lot of fabulism and you wouldn't uh, always know if what she's writing about is just her comparing things to nature or something or if it's foreshadowing. My hand is getting very tired. I'm just going to switch it. Right, so... I am concerned about some of the things that she's already trying to foreshadow. The way she starts uh, Ronan's chapters tells me that one of the lynches is going to die. I nearly spilled the tea all over myself. Uh, that would have been a disaster. Anyway, the way she writes just makes me so concerned. I'm worried that she's going to kill one of them and I don't know which one I prefer or which one I would be um, not sad about. I think... Um, I don't even know. Also, all the issues between Adam and Ronan I expected because even though the, the a Raven King ended very well for them. I knew that Ronan's power is going to give them trouble. Declan's words make me so worried as well. He said, literally said, that he doesn't know how much Adam would be able to handle. I'm not sure it's going to work out. It's one of those issues that I'm sure can be solved because it's Ronan's essence. He's a dreamer. I didn't want to brag because what if something falls through, but I got the offer. It's very, very decent, especially considering that I would be able to learn something and uh, develop my skills in this new digital area that I've started working uh, with maybe around two years ago. So I'm very excited about that. Today was my first day and I'm in shambles because I don't understand anything. It's a job from home office which is beneficial for me but also there are literally no systems in place, processes are not written down, no one uh, wrote down the instructions for the programs that they're using and I am scared and lost and I'm telling myself that I'm always scared and lost when I'm starting a new job so that's normal. So I'm convincing myself to create a spreadsheet because spreadsheets always help me with stress. I know it's nerdy and not cool. I'm also thinking of writing down questions that I don't understand yet. Regarding the cold down hook, uh, a lot of things were revealed. We now know that Hannah is also a dreamer, which was kind of obvious considering that she was doing forgeries and has all this talents and it was also kind of hinted earlier that all the girls that live with her in the house have her face so I thought that maybe they are twins but then when I figured out that they are more than one of them I thought that they were dreamed so not a big of a surprise but I love this I also love how through other dreamers we see how dreamers work, how their powers work and I enjoyed the fairy market so much. The description of fairy market is peak Maggie Stewater. I love all the characters ex except maybe Carmen. I'm not that much into her, I don't care about her story, but I love everything else. I honestly just love this series already so much. I don't think it's going to disappoint me unless she kills Ronan. Then I'm going to step away and never come back.
Tasche. You have not missed a lot since the last update. Two things happened. I went to see the new Charlie's Angels and now Kristen Stewart's bare ass in uh, the sexy gym outfit, if you've seen the movie you know what I'm talking about, is imprinted under my eyelids and is going right into my internal spank bank. And uh, the second thing is Call Down the Hawk just turned into Orphan Black. If you've seen the TV show, you know what I'm talking about. And I'm actually dinging it. I have not expected this turn of events, but it's fun, it's uh, intense, it reminds me about the TV show that I like. And also I had this thought when I was preparing for this update, Cold Down the Hawk literally is a better version of uh, the Dream Thieves. I have a hundred pages more to go. It's a Friday, so hopefully I would be able to read. I mean, I'm easily distracted. It takes so much for me to sit down and read a book these days. Uh, when I start, I cannot stop, but I have to start. So. I hope that the next update is going to be the last one, unless something really huge happens. I've seen some unenthusiastic reviews for this book, but I feel like all spin-offs and all sequels get that because people have a lot of different expectations and um, they also love different characters that don't appear in this book, for example Blue and Gansy, and they wanted to see them, so they are upset about it, which I think is stupid because she told that they're not going to be a part of this book. There are going to be mentions of them, but they are not going to be a focal point of the story. Which is fine. She's telling the story of the Lynch's family, and I find it very fascinating. I am in love with Declan. I'm ashamed to say so, but I am. And I love Matthew. I think they're both very fascinating characters. I enjoy Jordan so much, I think that Hennessy has a lot to offer and I cannot wait to finish and see what I'm going to think at the end of the story. What the actual fuck? I feel bamboozled by Megasty Water, I feel clowned. I don't know how she managed to do that because I was confident that I knew where she's going. Scratch the Better Dream Thieves comment a bit earlier because it's even more complicated than Dream Thieves. I... I don't know what to feel. I enjoyed the ending. I knew that a lot of things are going to be left unanswered because it's the first book in a trilogy, I believe. But the fact that she somehow had hidden that uh, Declan's and Ronan's mother are not the same woman. Thinking back to it, I remember him constantly saying again and again in all his chapters that he is trying to get used to that Ronan is a copy of Neil, but he isn't, and that he's trying to live the life that isn't his own, sort of, that he's trying to pretend to be this person and he's not this person. This was a bomb. I did not expect it. Not even taking this into consideration, I have a lot of questions. I even wrote them down under CDTH thoughts. First thought, what the fuck is this ending? I feel like it's, it's very valid. Second thought, why Adam had not responded to the text in the end makes me worried. Do we even know if he made it back to uni 
on Ronan's motorcycle. I'm pretty sure that they have not talked since. Or maybe they did. I hope they did, because otherwise he's for sure dead. I'm joking, we don't want that to happen. The fourth question is how the fuck Neil's copy is alive and is not slipping if Neil is dead. Was the lace thingy a demon or is it something else? This uh, series has a lot of promise. I'm a bit tongue-tied, I don't know why, because I'm still processing the ending and processing the book. I feel like I will have more questions as the time goes by because there are a lot of loose ends. I think it's a solid four start because uh, there was a moment where the tune changed so much and I didn't like that when uh, the uh, moderator started to attack the Zed. It was kind of confusing, a confusing shift. It's like a whole paragraph was lost there. But otherwise, I'm pretty pleased. The world is expanding. I feel like Maggie Stewart wants to expand to adult fantasy, which I would like to see. I feel like she has this potential and she would feel freer in adult fantasy as a genre. And I can tell she's very into this Declan Jordan dynamic and I would like to point out that I'm also into their romance. I'm really not that much into straight couples, but Jordan and Declan have something. I won't be rumbling anymore in this vlog. If you read the book, tell me what you thought. Tell me about the questions you have, because I'm pretty sure that we all have many questions. If you have any theories about my questions, also leave them. I will see you, hopefully, with another video very soon, but until then, 